You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Brian Kelly was a guest on uh, God Bless Football, which is part of the, the Lebitard Network. He was on with Mike Golick and, and uh, Stu Gotts. And uh, this was late last week. Forgive me, not sure how we missed it late last week, but uh, about a 20-minute sit-down convo. You can go watch the full conversation on YouTube if you want to um, with, with the guys. But they covered a lot of ground, and I thought maybe the most interesting stuff that Brian Kelly talked about were some pointed conversations about how he's managing his roster with... Uh, in the light of of NIL. Uh, this is number four, Muse, if you would. Here was, again, Brian Kelly uh, on, on God Bless Football talking about roster management in the NIL era. Well, if we had a salary cap, I'd be okay with it. But there's, there's no yeah. salary cap. I yeah. mean, that's that's the issue, really. I mean, if we all were operating under, a, you know, the same guidelines, at least we could, you know, know, okay, this is what we've got. But that's really the biggest issue. But look, the parallels, you're right. I mean, look, Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, they're all looking for that rookie signing bonus. You know, we're out there recruiting seniors in high school. They're looking for that freshman signing bonus. Yeah. The transfer yeah. portal, he's looking for a free agent bonus. And then the guys on your roster, they want retention bonuses. So it parallels. NIL money is broken down into the three categories that the NFL is paying out. And we're we're doing the same thing. Unfortunately, we're doing without a salary cap. And that's where it, where it makes it just absolutely crazy. So I, I know there are a lot of people pushing for some type of regulation. And as he put it, a salary cap. It's never going to happen with NIL. That's important to note. And I've been I've had this conversation enough with attorneys and IL attorneys that have said they already have the lawsuits drawn. If anybody tries to ever implement a salary cap, that you'll immediately face lawsuits. Think of it in think of it this way. Because you're not these aren't salaried employees. You're talking about NIL deals. This is name, image, and likeness. By the letter of how it is written, these are endorsement deals. Imagine if you if the WNBA tried to cap the endorsement deals Caitlin Clark could do. Imagine if the NBA tried to cap how much Michael Jordan could make on endorsements. Imagine if the PGA said, we're going to cap what Tiger Woods can make in endorsements. It's, it's ludicrous, but it's the same conversation. And I understand we could say, well, no, this is pay for play. Not by the letter of the law. If you ever get to a point where the student athletes are deemed to be employees and they unionize, or, then you can start to have that conversation. But you can't have that conversation right now. And quite honestly, it's no different in structure and in theory in creating the haves and the have nots that would exist in college football forever, which is where the schools with the biggest budget won. You had the best coaches, you had the best support staff, you had the best facilities. I mean, this facilities arms race that built up where you had these football operation centers where Texas had like flat screen TVs in everybody's locker room. You know, Oregon has like the, this waterfall in their facility. Alabama built a barber shop in their football facility. I mean, you don't think all of those things differentiate the haves and the have nots? It's no different than what's happening right now. It's just displaced from using that money to build facilities and having travel budgets so whenever you travel, you're flying private and staying in nice hotels or a recruiting budget. It's no different. It's just differentiating the haves and the have-nots and where the and facilitating where the funds are going. Instead of going to build new facilities, it's going to the players. Okay. So we're still talking about the same teams that have been great being great. It's just where the money's going is different and how you manage a roster is different. And I'll continue to say it. The only people that are inconvenienced by this are millionaire coaches. Fans may not like it. You may like being more settled knowing a guy signs at 18, he's with you for three years. That You may like that. It may be more settling for you, but I don't care. It's not about what makes you comfortable. If you don't like the process, fine. Just show up on Saturdays in the fall and cheer for your team, which is what I recommend people do anyway. But the, the salary cap, as Kelly said, like, that's not going to happen with respect to NIL. Now, what's interesting is today, Virginia, 
the state of Virginia, uh, passed a law that will allow institutions to directly pay athletes for name, image, and likeness deals. Now, again, these are still NIL deals, but a school, an athletic department, can now pay their student-athlete in the state of Virginia to market for the university, for the athletic department, so you don't have to use the collective as an intermediary for other businesses or whatever it may be. The school can directly do it. Now, the interesting thing about that is, what does this mean for Title IX? If the athletic department is spending money to buy endorsement deals with a male student-athlete, do they have to spend the same for a female student-athlete? That's where it's going to get a little foggy, but... Look, Louisiana is one of six states, including South Carolina, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Illinois, and Mississippi, that have pending legislation right now similar to allow schools to pay NIL deals. So all of this is evolving, and I understand we're evolving, but it was interesting to hear Brian Kelly talk about it in this respect with how he's building a roster. But the other thing Kelly said, can you play number five, please, is in spite of how many people think that this is ruining college football, Brian Kelly sees it the other way. College football is in a great place. We know there's a lot of money. The problem is nobody knows what this is going to look like in a right. couple of years. And and if anybody does, please let me know. Um, it, but we just have to figure out how to cap this so so we can move forward. It's again nil is never going to be capped. If you get to a point where there's rev share, that's a different conversation where the, the revenue that athletic departments are generating is being shared with the student-athletes. That's different, but you're never going to cap NIL, ever. You will never, ever, ever be able to limit, be able to tell someone, you can't make X. Like, this is the X is the most you can make in endorsement deals. I mean, we live in a capitalistic country. We're free market capitalists. If someone's willing to pay you for your time and talents, whatever they're willing to pay you, God bless, go get it. Who, who are you or me or Brian Keller or the NCR or anybody to tell some 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old you can't? Imagine telling Caitlin Clark this year you're capped on how much money you can make in NIL. Imagine telling Caleb Williams this year you're capped on how much money you can. You won the Heisman last year. You're back at Southern Cal, but you're capped on the amount of money you can make. Get real. It'll never happen. It'll, they will never be able to cap NIL money. The only way we ever get some type of cap is if you're talking about truly paying players as employees, and I don't see that day even close. So the people that will be inconvenienced the most will continue to be the coaches. And I'm good with that because they're all rich too. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.